So we are on the topic of uh, spiritual gr- growth. It's secret. Uh, Bhagwan is giving us tips how we can grow spiritually. spiritually. And in verse 339, he gave the description of our actually realized master, which is the goal for us. So he says that if he knows that the self in him uh, is the same self in moving and unmoving objects, which means the self in me is the self in all, that is a position of liberation. That's where he gets freed from the thraldom of sansara. And sansara here is the cycle of birth and death. And he remains as the absolute and the infinite self. And then to recognize this entire universe as the self means this means what means self it means everything that I see is nothing but a reflection of me. I am the substratum for this entire world of moving and unmoving objects. That is the only way to get realization. There is no other way. This is what is being told. So what is the first secret is that we have to come to recognize that self as the universal self, the small self or the small I, like Gurudev would call it, you know, where I think I is this little body, this little mind of mine, my intelligence, where I think that right now that is my thought process that I am this body, mind, intellect equipment. We need to recognize that I am not this body, mind, intellect equipment, but I am that which is supporting the body, mind and intellect, which is that that I am that because of which the body is functioning, because of which the eyes are seeing, because of which the nose is smelling. So I am not the nose or the eyes but I am that which is supporting all this. That is that is the shift in vision that we need to get. And then, and how, do, how does one get this? By excluding the objective world through steadfastness in the eternal Atman. So right now, just reminding ourselves that I am not this. That's why we, Upanishad also gives us the method, not this, not this, not neti, neti, neti. Which is, no, I am not the world. I am not the senses. I am not the body. Keep reminding yourself. And then Bhagwan asks a question, like the one who is identified with his body, however can he be freed from this thraldom of sansar? Identified with the body means thinking that I am the body. So when you think that I am the body, then this whole world becomes very real because everything is connected to the body. The body then has desires. The body has to have certain things, certain comforts, et cetera, et cetera. And then for that, because I I am the body, so I need this. I need that. Actually, the need is of the body. And if I come to know that I am not the body, then think what will happen. But I'm thinking that I am the body. I am the mind. I'm the intellect. So body needs a certain certain amount of things. Mind needs that love and recognition. Intelligence requires that, you know, that people honor me. And, And when that doesn't come, then I become miserable. And becoming miserable itself is sansar. You're caught in sansar. So this is what uh, Bhagwan is saying here. They, those who are devoted to the Atman, devoted to the Atman means recognize the Atman, have faith in the Atman, uh, want to realize the Atman, know that that is the only thing which is important in this life. People don't even know that. People don't even know that, right? That is the problem. So he says, then once we come to know that, then what I should do is I should do Shravana, Manana and Nididhyasanam. Shravana, listening. That is what we are doing right now. Unless we hear from somebody all these things, how will we know? We didn't know before. Now that we have come into the mission, now that we are listening to Gita or Vivek Churamani or any other text, then at least now we should be practicing those virtues that have been given. So Shanta Danta, so Shama and Dhamma, control of the mind, control of the senses, extremely important. Control of the mind, meaning the mind not um, being allowed to go out. Control of the senses means not allowing the objects to come in. And what do we mean by not allowing the mind to go out or the senses to come, uh, objects to come in? Physically, no object is coming inside my mind. That is, uh, that's an impossibility. But what is happening is 
I see the object and it is disturbing me. If it disturbs me, it has entered my mind. That is what it is. Physically, nothing is, you know, I see a, a nice car or a, a pair of shoes or clothes or whatever. Of course, it's out there. But in my mind, now there is an agitation. Oh, I wish I had that kind of a car. Oh, I wish I had that. I wish I need that disturbance when it comes, that object has entered your mind. So if the disturbance is not coming in your mind, we, we see thousands of objects every day. We can't help it. Not that every single object is disturbing. Every single object cannot, it is a, you know, if every single object were to dis disturb every single person in the world, that, that is an impossibility. But there are certain objects which enter certain people's minds. And for a spiritual seeker, the, pr the practice or the sadhana, the self-effort has to be to not allow the mind to get disturbed, no matter what the mind sees, hears, tastes, smells, or touches. These are the five gateways of perception. This is, this is the only way we, we experience the world. So whatever experiences that are coming to us, if my mind is not getting disturbed, then I have not let that object uh, uh, come into my mind. And then the mind reveling in that object, that is what, what is meant by mind going out. So mind is with me only. Again, physically, nothing is going nowhere. Mind is not physical. But what is happening is in my mind, oh, what, oh, I should have had that car. No, such a beautiful car. Such a So now what is happening is, and uh, uh, then my life will be complete. If I can have that object, if I can go out there, if I can, then only my life will be complete. Otherwise, my life is incomplete. That's when the mind has gone out. So if I can curtail that sort of thinking, and the basic thinking is that I will be happy to get this. That is the basic, basic, basic incorrect thinking. So if I can curtail that, if I can stop thinking that, uh, if I get this object, I will be happy. I have not allowed the mind to go out. That is how simple it is actually. But sometimes it's difficult to practice. But that is what it is. Okay. And then uh, even the wise men find it is, uh, impossible to destroy the ego. Ego is this identification. Ego, the definition of ego is identification with one thing or another. And so this is difficult. What I just told you, don't allow the object, don't allow the object to disturb you, don't allow the mind to revel in the object is ego. When that is happening, it is the ego at play. That's why Bhagavan says that it is not easy for wise. So don't think that it is very, I mean, I simply put it, you know, don't let them do this and don't do that. To do it is not easy. So it requires a lot of practice. It requires a lot of dispassion. Okay. So those who are new here, suddenly it is not going to come. But you must remember that it is not impossible. Because people have achieved that state. And if it was impossible, then no spiritual master is going to tell us to do something which is impossible. It is difficult, but not impossible. That must be remembered. Otherwise, we will say, oh, it is impossible. Forget it. I can't do it. We would never try. We would never strive. And a lot of hard work is required in this. Okay. So then the projecting, then what is happening? Why is this happening? Is because of the projecting power and the veiling power. I told you the projection cannot happen without the veiling. What is the veiling? Veiling is to veiling is like a nylon curtain. You know, then what happens is on the other side, whatever there is, is not very clearly seen. That is what veiling is. Veiling is not like a, a, a iron cur curtain, which you can't see anything beyond that. That is not veiling. That is just absolutely no no seeing at all veiling means you see incorrectly you see you do see but it's hazy it's not very well seen and that's where our example of snake and rope comes and you walk into a room which is not very well lit you have to remember that if the room was completely dark the rope also would not have been seen there's no question of veiling then but it is not fully lit it is not fully dark it is only twi like twilight it's it, 
there is a very faint light. And in that faint light, veiling is happening. And because of that veiling, I projected. I projected the snake. So in our case, what is happening is, I know that I am, okay? It's If I didn't even know that I'm existing, and nobody is going to say that, if I ask any one of you, are you existing? You're not going to say, no, no, I am not existing. Huh? Whatever. Nobody can say that. But what are you existing as? That is where the mistake is. This, this Aditya who is new. So I know some of you will find this as a repetition, but this is required. So this Bhikshepa Shakti and uh, Avarana Shakti, these are the two powers which are making us, uh, we are, which are deluding us into thinking that there is uh, happiness in the world of objects. So the veiling power has to be taken care of first. That is the cause. That is the initial cause. The effect is the projection. So if you keep taking care of the effect and leave the cause as is, the effect is going to keep coming back and back and back. I gave you the example last time. If there is an infection and you are getting a fever, you keep treating the fever with Tylenol, then the fever will go away but come again because you have not really taken care of the infection, which is the cause of the fever. So you don't worry about the fever. You only treat the infection. And once the infection goes, the fever automatically goes away with that. And therefore, this... Uh, um, Viveka, this discrimination is very difficult because it is like milk getting mixed with water. And that is extremely difficult to separate and that sort of discrimination we need. And when we have that discrimination of what is really real, what is the self and what is the not self, then this veiling will get destroyed. And once the veiling gets destroyed, we do not have to worry about the projection. We don't. It will never happen. And that's where we had completed. And now we are on verse 346. Perfect discrimination arising from direct realization distinguishes the true nature of the subject from that of the object and snaps the bond of delusion created by Maya. There is no more transmigration for one who has liberated himself from this. So direct realization, the, the, there are many types of discriminations that I've told you. Sat asat, the discrimination between real and unreal is the highest. That highest discrimination will be reached, will be perfected once we have realized the self. But these other discriminations that are there can be, def we, we have to practice these lower ones, Shreya, Prayer, Vivek, what is good, what is pleasant, what is the goal, what is the means, uh, what is the part, what is the whole. I'm not going to go into details of this because I have told you all these. So this is where we have to start. Kathominishad says to start at Shreya Prayer. That is a very basic discrimination. What is good for me and what is pleasing for me? Okay, what is good for my health? That is where we would start because we consider ourselves to be the body. So we start, you know, is this good for my health or is this I'm eating this or doing this because I feel good about it? That's where you start and then you rise up the ladder. This final discrimination will come when you realize the self. And the self, this, the self is realized when you uh, detach yourself from the objective world more and more and more. Also come to realize that the body also is a part of the world, which is the most difficult thing to realize. Is that the body, mind, intellect is also a part of the world, and that also has to be rejected. And and the true nature of the subject and that of the object, and he has put that in quotes. The final subject is the seer. The final subject is Atman. Right now, I see this pseudo subject. It's a false subject, which is the ego, which is the small I. Because I say I see the world, so that. I, which is seeing the world, is the small I, which is the ego. And that is what I think. That is the subject. And that is the object. And the way that that, that final seer will be recognized is by 
coming to know that the body is also falling in the object part. See, right now I think this is what I am and then everything around me is objects. So this body also has to go into the object part. Once I know that, body, mind, intellect, all, then I will know that the final seer, the final subject is Atman. And when that then is the discrimination between Sat and Asat, because the ego also is Asat, which I don't recognize right now. I think that it is true. Right now, that is where I am. That is why all the hurt is very uh, true for me. The pain, uh, the insult, if somebody insults me, or if somebody praises me, then I'm very, very happy. All this is to the ego, and I think it is all real. But it is not. That needs to be recognized. That is what realization is. And snaps the bond of delusion created by Maya. Maya is Maya is has these two powers of veiling and projection, the tamas and rajas, the avarana shakti and the uh, vikshepa shakti. These two powers equals Maya. That is what Maya is, and these two powers will be removed, will go away. The veiling will go away once I know who I really am. That is what the veiling is for us. I think I am the BMI, the body, mind, intellect as opposed to I actually, I am the Atma. Okay, so that, and there is no more transmigration for one who has liberated himself from this. So once he comes out of this, of the clutches of Maya, he will never be born again. This master, this realized master will not be born again because we have no, we know that in realization, when he realizes his true self, the, Sanchita karma and the agami karma both get destroyed. Sanchita and agami, these are the two karmas which are the cause of birth and death, which are the cause of the next birth. When they get destroyed, the prarabdha gets exhausted in this life. The prarabdha karma is there. Knowledge cannot destroy that. It gets exhausted in this life. And when the body falls, there is no more birth for him because there is no more Sanchita karma for him remaining for him. Okay. Paravarai katva viveka vannihi daihatya vidya gahanam jashesham kim syat punasam saradasya bijam advaita bhavam samupe yushosya. The fire of knowledge that the jiva is Brahman, is the Brahman, entirely consumes the impenetrable forest of avidya or nascence. For him who has realized the state of oneness, is there any seed left for future transmigration? This is what I was telling you. Sanchita karma is the seed. You need a seed. You need a cause uh, for some effect. The birth is the effect. The cause is the seed. What is the seed? That Sanchita Karma. If that seed gets burnt, there cannot be a future birth. You know, we have uh, coffee seeds or uh, coffee beans, and we also have like peanuts, uh, which the coffee beans you can plant and a coffee plant will come. But once you roast them, the coffee beans, once you roast them, the food value is retained, but the sprouting value is uh, gone, right? Peanuts, peanuts also, you can do that. You can roast them. And that is what is, what is being said here. How do I roast that seed is by knowledge. Here, there in the outer world, it's heat. You would roast them. So you are going to give. Them. So that's why knowledge is called as heat of fire of knowledge, heat in the heat of knowledge. In Bhagavad Gita, also, Bhagavan says that there is nothing, there is no greater purifier than knowledge. Knowledge is the greatest purifier. You know, you want to purify our body, you want to purify our speech, you want to purify our mind, all these things we want to purify, but the greatest pure is knowledge. So, knowledge when is there and what is actual correct Vedantic knowledge is that I am the self. So when that knowledge dawns, then what happens is the Sanchita Karma, which is the seed, that they are the seeds. All the karmas, they are the seeds. 
they get roasted they get roasted so there is no more uh, effect coming out of them and the prarabdha karma remains and it gets exhausted as the body continues to live okay so that's why he, he says that para avara ekatva para supreme avara lower para is higher lower is avara so the ekatva the oneness between para and avara so what is para is atman and what is avara is jiva ego and they are one and the same they are actually one and the same but i think of them as different so i think that i am here and god is here in the temple or in the in the altar or in the uh, idol or somewhere like that so this is what i'm thinking so this para avara ekatva viveka vannihi so this the distinction between higher and lower gets burnt out in the fire of knowledge and what is the fire of knowledge that is what is telling us that this jiva this ego is nothing but that atman that's why in bhagavad gita bhagwan said mama eva ausha jiva my part only my ausha my part is this jiva so it is not different from me this is what bhagwan is telling can i say that my hand is different from me my hand is a part of me so my eyes are a part of me so they are not different from me so understand that that jiva is itself brahman and when that understanding comes at that moment the karmas get burnt automatically automatically it doesn't have to do anything okay advaita bhavam samupesha yusha so there is no in that advaita bhava advaita oneness between jiva and brahman there cannot be any chance of transmigration because there is no seed left there and without a seed you cannot have a plant you cannot the tree cannot grow just from the ground up it has to have a seed okay so birth cannot happen if there is no seed avaranasya nivruttihi bhavati hi samyak padartha darshanatah mithya jnana vinashah tad vikshepa janita dukha nivruttihi the veil that hides truth gets lifted indeed when reality is fully experienced soon follows the destruction of false understanding and the cessation of misery brought about by agitations created by the false knowledge now what is the false knowledge i am body mind intellect that is false knowledge the world is real that is false knowledge there is happiness in the world that is false knowledge all this is false knowledge okay now when will now this false knowledge is what is bringing us agitations why because when i consider the world to be real and when i consider that my happiness is in the world then whatever is in that world and i want it and i don't get it i'm miserable it's all real to me it's all real to me so when i don't get that thing which is real as per me then i'm unhappy and the the basis is wrong the the very fact that i think that that object is real is wrong it's false knowledge but that is how we have been living for births and births and majority of the people are living like that majority so when the minority thinks like that and when the minority is not very strong when the person is not very strong he can get swayed by the majority when you know 100 people are telling you that no 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 there is happiness in the world then you might you will shake if you're not strong if you're not well established in this knowledge you will shake that's why we need establishment so now soon follows the when will this distract so this false knowledge has to be destroyed that is the next point this is if this is false knowledge that needs to be destroyed and when will it get destroyed the when the veil that hides the truth gets lifted okay not that there is any physical veil anywhere okay we have our like our example of sun and clouds when will i see the sun when the clouds are lifted when the clouds are either blown away by the breeze or whatever way the sun is there so that cloud is the veiling and also remember that 
the clouds are seen because of the sun if the sun was not there like in the dark do you see the clouds you can't so the veiling also is known because of the truth because the truth is exist because the sun is existing i can even see the clouds same way because the truth is there this veiling is experienced and the veiling the experience of the veiling is in the thought i am the body mind intellect it's in the thought everything is in thought there is nothing physical there is no physical veiling covering the truth and then and nothing like that it's only in our mind so that's why vedanta is only a shift in vision so in the mind when i have the thought that i am the body mind and intellect which majority of the people have then what happens is that this uh, this uh, this is the veiling this is what is veiling the truth when this thought is removed like when the cloud is removed the sun will be seen this thought has to be removed that i am bmi and it has to be replaced by the thought aham brahmasmi i am brahman and that is what will destroy this wrong knowledge this is what is being said samyak padartha darshanatah samyak padartha is the truth that is the correct knowledge correct knowledge is i am atma i am brahman that is correct knowledge false knowledge is i am bmi the knowledge i am bmi body mind intellect is causing sorrows now when will the sorrow go when i stop thinking i am the body mind intellect when will i stop thinking i am the body mind intellect when i get established in the fact that i am atma i am brahman i am not body mind intellect very simple Tripti is laughing because she knows how simple it is. Theory is very simple, practice is difficult, but not impossible. I once again repeat, it is not impossible. If it was impossible, they wouldn't have told us to do this, and we wouldn't have seen masters, you know, exhibiting these type of qualities. Okay, so this is what is the misery is brought out, brought about because of false knowledge. otherwise there is no misery okay okay so this topic is over here does anybody have any questions as regards this topic as regards the verses yes aditya yeah thank you for allowing me to ask this question um so my question is that in the start you said that um something along the lines of uh, working towards realizing that you are not your body you're not your mind you, you know you're not even the people around you because everything is you is an ex- expression of you right so my my question was association with samsara and the people around you right provide you a certain level of comfort and connection just like the zoom room if i was sitting in the zoom zoom room all by myself i would feel a certain level of you know aloneness if you, if if that makes sense so that uh, level of separation and identity has gives you a feeling like you're not alone so when the realization dawns on you that you know what i am everything wouldn't that wouldn't that lead to a lot of um um aloneness or uh, feeling like it's just you there's nothing else okay so uh, your voice was breaking up a little bit so what I, what i understand what i understood and correct me if i'm wrong is that uh, you say that when we are with people we feel a connection right so we don't feel lonely or alone we are with that okay now when we realize that oneness what the realization and then if we realize you're saying is it aloneness or is that what, what was the last line you said when i as and when i realize yeah can you hear me now is it okay is the audio okay no should i put my mm, one second let me see if i it will be better there's a lot of echo can coming. everybody else hear dinesh there is a lot of echo coming correct yeah mm-hmm. echo is there anything you can do yeah. to reduce the echo can you try again aditya is it better no, we cannot hear you now hello i'm, I'm going to try with my No, I cannot hear Aditya right now. Oh, oh you can't. You can't hear me now. 
Now we, we can, can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Actually, okay. we can hear you better, no? Yes, but okay, it's okay, faint. Okay. You need to increase the volume. But yes, we can hear you clearly. Yeah. Okay. So what what I was saying was um, what I was saying was association with Sansara and the people around you provides mm-hmm. you a certain level of comfort and connection. Mm-hmm. And that level of separation, even though it might be an illusion, gives you a feeling like you're not alone. Just like mm-hmm. this room, right? We are mm-hmm. all together. If I was alone, then I would feel lonely just by myself. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when the realization dawns on you, mm-hmm. or when you get get a glimpse into the understanding that uh, I am Brahman, or I'm mm-hmm. I'm the only one, wouldn't that feel very lonely? Ah, okay. Like, you, like when you were born, you were all alone. When you're dying, that, that, that feeling feels uh, feels very uh, like uh, distant scary or lack of connection. Scary also, very scary. Scary. Okay. Okay. So. Um, first of all you know um the question is are you ever alone you said that if we the zoom was not there and you were alone in your house mm-hmm. you are alone question is to think this is what you have to think anybody any one of us am i really alone ever ever Well, that's the thing, right? I mean, I'm beginning to realize that I'm, I've always been alone. Uh, you, you come into this earth alone, you go alone, and everything is just an illusion. Okay. So. Okay. Any one of my other students want to answer this? Rupa, are we ever alone? I need an answer. Yes or no? Who thinks it's yes? Let's say. Who, who thinks it's you? Suman, you think we are alone? Leela Sharma, no. Correct. No, 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 Jayaji, I, yeah, no, I don't feel alone. Sorry. <laughs> no, you don't feel alone, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. The principle Aditya here is that no matter whether another human being is with you or not, God is always with you. Mm. And how do I know that God is with me? Is because, okay, you are in the house. Do you know that you're existing? Are you breathing? Okay, so yeah, breathing. You're breathing. You are existing inside the house. Mm-hmm. That existence principle, which is God, is with you. So, actually, actually, we are never. If we would be alone, we would be dead. That's when you're alone. Is dead. So the very fact that you are alive, existing in your own house, you may be alone. You are not lonely. You are always with God or God is always with you. This is, this is the shift in thinking that we have to have. This is what Vedanta is now teaching us. That's number one. Now, if you realize yourself to be that universal principle, the totality, the truth, you will actually come to realize that this whole universe is being supported by you. You are the final supporter of all this. How can you be lonely? There is nothing other than you. That is the feeling that you will get. That's why we say the self in me is the self in all. This is not just like we are just saying it. I'm just saying it to explain. But the person who realizes it, Even at my stage, I don't feel lonely ever, ever. Why? Because I am very convinced that God is with me. Always. Throughout the day, throughout the night, in your deep sleep also, the the Satchit Ananda principle, Brahman is with you. And you know why? Because when you wake up, don't you have memory? that you slept well. Does somebody else tell you, oh, you slept very well huh, last night? Or do you inherently, you know? I know. I know. You know. And then how do you know? Because there is a presence of something with you. And you, you think you're the body, mind, intellect. Yes, your body is alone in the house. Agreed. Agreed. But... That body, the very fact that that body is breathing and existing and functioning tells you that there is somebody else with the body. Mm -hmm. 
that is God. But uh, just a follow up question. If we say that God is with me, isn't that introducing another sense of separation? No, because you have to now understand, you have to understand what God is now. Okay, that you have to understand. God is a principle. It is not an idol. It is not in the temple. It is not, you know, something different from you. It is the principle of existence, consciousness and bliss. Principle. Are you existing? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you conscious of that existence? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Right? So that principle is with you. That is what God is. Therefore, mm. the word God has to be understood correctly in Vedanta. Mm. Most people think God is in the temple. God is in the, this thing, idol. And therefore, God is, you know, that did this to me, that to me. God doesn't do anything. As per Vedanta, God is non-doer. Satchit Ananda is non-doer. So whatever is coming to us is because of all the actions that we have done in the past. It's my actions alone that will give me good results and bad results. So there is no blame game. You did this, therefore I suffered. No, 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 no. I suffered because I did something in my past life because of which I got the suffering. Okay, I, I won a lottery. No credit to anybody else. You say, oh, my friend recommended that I go to this store and buy this lottery ticket and I bought. So the credit goes to my friend. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. So the, there is no blame. That's why Vedanta teaches us no blame game. No need to give credit to anybody. You have to, but don't take pride in it. As we go further in Vedanta, we know this is the result of my own karmas. And because if this, this life is a result, is an effect of my past karmas, then if I want my future life to be good, I must do good karmas. That is how it follows. Now, Vedanta tells us, get out of this cycle of birth and death. Whether it's a good life that I will get or whatever life that I will get, there is birth. And when there is birth, human birth, there is always merit and demerit. So the best way to get out of this is to realize who I really am. And I really am that existence consciousness bliss principle i'm not the body as long as you keep thinking you're the body and you're the mind then your mind is lonely then nobody is keeping you company there's nobody this that everything will happen you'll need tv or phone or radio or something or the other you need it makes you independent this knowledge makes you independent it makes you fearless as you go along in your studies does that make sense mm -hmm. Yeah, because there are people who have asked um, Swamiji this question, what will happen if I realize? <laughs> First you realize, and then you see what will happen. You know, It's like, don't, don't, don't worry about, you know, realization or no realization. Okay, so yeah, we, we, yes. Uh, Rupa had a question, or at least she raised her hand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, sorry, I didn't see that. Uh, no, I just wanted to talk about that aloneness factor. Is That's also a concept we have created along the way, the, the feeling of alone. I mean, we, it, taking that analogy of uh, Zoom itself, if you were in a room full of Zoom, a uh, Zoom meeting room, and we they, everybody else spoke a different language we didn't understand, that would be an interesting uh, aloneness uh, in that. And Jayaji, I wanted to touch on one Swami Chidatmananda when I was talking to him, he mentioned about how fearful it is when you're getting close to that realization, your ego fights it with all its might, right? Because the concept of aloneness is also coming from that ego. So it has created that fear of that aloneness, but it is only a concept that it's created. So uh, while I never been there, but I can understand that uh, it is a layer that we have added on by ourselves. Yeah. One thing that I would like to uh, uh, say there is the ego creates a feeling of loneliness, not aloneness. Loneliness is fearful. Aloneness is never fearful. Aloneness is kaivalya. 
That's why we have Kaivalya Upadeshas. Actually, we are trying to go to the alone. Right. Where I am itself, the whole thing, there is nothing to be lonely. Lonely is what ego fears. Ego always, and we feel lonely. We, we feel as long, when we feel lonely, we have denied God. Remember that. If I feel I'm all alone, I have nobody with me, that means you have denied God. You have denied the presence of God. Okay? So lonely is not acceptable. Aloneness is, our journey is, Gurudev has said, from alone to the alone. And we see that in life, like Aditya said, when we are born, we are born alone. When we die, we will die alone without taking it. When we came, we never brought anything. Not even a piece of cloth was there on our body. When we go, nothing is going to go with us. But in between, we want company. Why? Why? Uh, uh, aloneness is ke kevala, kevala alone. Kaivalya is the noun, aloneness. And lonely would be in Sanskrit... Mm, I'll have to think about it. I'll have to think about lonely. lonely. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they're different. But the concept you understand. What is the concept of loneliness? You will feel you'll feel an emptiness in the pit of your stomach, right? But when you're alone, you're full inside. That is the difference. Understand the difference. So in aloneness, there is a fullness. Full. You feel full. Okay, not like when you've eaten, you feel full, but you feel full in the heart. Whereas in loneliness, you feel that emptiness inside. And that's what makes you miserable. So that feeling will go away if you have, if you're firmly established in the fact that God is with me, I can never be alone. I can never be lonely. Sorry. Right. I'm not by myself at any time, any point in time. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do, there is a new topic that is starting here, cause effect false. So there is a, a PowerPoint. Yes, Dinesh. Very deep, sorry, Kalpana also has raised her hand. Sure. Kalp, Kalp, people just keep shifting. Where is Kalpana now? Oh, yeah, there you are. Sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Why does this thing keep shifting all the time? Good question. <laughs> I don't know. Does it happen for everybody or is it only happening for no, me? It's also happening, but I kind of just ignore okay. it. Okay, fine. Because then I see somebody here and then they're gone suddenly somewhere. Okay, Kalpana, go ahead. Um, I had a comment too. Um, I had listened to another lecture and one thing struck my mind. Um, they said that, like, you know, our sense organs only see and they transmit the thought to your brain. And your brain interprets it mm -hmm. based on our old experiences. So each thought, mm -hmm. even though the intake is the same from the eyes, what happens in the brain is totally different from person to person. So when we feel Correct. alone, then like, you know, one person's alone is somebody else's socialization, let's say, or their relaxation time. So it varies so much from person to person. And that really, that really struck my mind. I thought, whoa, that's a whole new dimension. It is because you're right. You're, you're very, very true. Like the object is the same, but different people will have different thoughts. Yeah. Depending on that. And the common example that is given is of the full moon. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a poet looks at it and he thinks, that it is the beautiful face of his girlfriend and he'll write a poetry on it. Okay. Whereas a scientist might look at it, an astronomer, and then he thinks different, you know, he, he will think in those lines that it's a, you know, it's a thing in the sky and it doesn't have light of its own and it is only reflecting the light of the sun and all those kinds of things. And uh, they say a, a person who hasn't hadn't eaten food for a month will look at it and he'll say, oh, that's a lovely roti that I could have. It's a chapati. 
right? So depending on the psyche of the person, they see things. We even hear things like that, right? We hear, uh, oh, so you, you spoke so rudely and somebody else will say, no, that was okay. That is very true. It is on how our mindset is. And generally, I'll tell you, when our mind is very happy, everything outside appears happy, happy, happy. And when our mind is not happy, then even the happiest thing appears as like horrible. Notice it. You know, you're happy. Then somebody says, good morning. You're like, yeah, good morning. You know, and when you're sad, you're like, what good? What is good about this morning? This is how it will come out. Whereas the morning is the same. It is neither good nor bad. So everything is on our own psyche. 